Greetings, everybody. Welcome back to Hear Her Sports Fast Track. I'm Elizabeth Emery. This week, we have an outtake from episode 56 with triathlete, coach, and cancer survivor, Lisa Keller. Lisa is a level one certified USA triathlon coach and a level one certified Roadrunners Club of America coach. She is a native adventurous Alaskan with her own coaching company, Multisport Training of Alaska. This clip was cut from the full episode because Lisa and I had a terrific and very long chat. So, well, you know, something had to go. I've always been sad about that and wanted to get this section posted somehow. So here we are. In this fast track, Lisa talks about being a cancer survivor and an athlete. Early on, she mentions Alaska Run for Women, which is a women-only race started in 1993 to raise money and awareness of breast cancer. Lisa is one of the founding board members. As I said, it's a clip, so we jump right in. I was diagnosed with cancer in 2002, mm-hmm. and my kids were two and four years old at the time. Holy cow. So they were little. Yeah. yeah. And it was ironic because I had been at the start of the run for women in 1993. So I was, you know, on the board and had been on on the race committee and I found the lump like a week after the run for women. So it was really ironic Mm -hmm. Um, and went through everything, had a mastectomy, just a unilateral mastectomy and a lymph node dissection, which... Uh, At that time, they can see if there's a sentinel node, meaning if cancer has gotten into your lymph nodes yet. I can't remember why, but he wasn't able to do that. So he ended up having to take all my lymph nodes from my left arm. And I did have two tumors, and that's why I had to have the mastectomy. So that does cause some problems. You have to watch out for lymphedema when you've had lymph nodes taken out. And lymphedema is an accumulation of lymph fluid because you no longer have those lymph nodes that are processing that fluid. And once you have lymphedema, then you can never get rid of it. And so if you ever see women or other, mostly women, you'll see with like compression sleeves on their arms, that's because they have lymphedema. So, so far I I haven't had any problems with that. Um, But I had chemo, I had radiation, and then I was on tamoxifen for five years after that. So that was 17 years ago and here I am (laughs) still alive. What was it like to have cancer as an athlete or What's it like to be an athlete that's had cancer? Yeah, that's kind of two different questions. So the first thing, so I was 38 years old and obviously I just two years before I'd had a baby. So I was kind of in my mind starting on these new goals of like, okay, so I still have a couple more years, like my fastest marathon. I'd only run two road marathons. My fastest marathon was a 303. So I was like, I got to break three hours in a marathon, you know? And, um, you get cancer and pretty much that's like all out the door. So some of the big stuff that really impacted me, for instance, was radiation. And that was one of the, I I cried, I think two or three times. And one of the times is when they said, you have to have radiation because you had this one tumor that was so close to your chest wall and my cancer was in my left breast. So the radiation is going to hit your heart. And it's going to hit part of your lung. It's going to hit the top 10% of your lung. And then I went through this whole thing of like, I'm not going to do radiation because it's going to impact my heart. And I'd already chosen a drug that was newer, a Canadian drug that didn't have as many heart problems because all the drugs you get affect your your heart because they're getting fed right into your heart first when you go through chemo. So there's a tube that goes right into the the vein that goes into your heart. So it's in your chest. So I had picked this one drug for chemo that didn't have as many heart effects on it, but then the radiation came up and they're like, oh, it's gonna go across your heart, but you gotta have this, but it's only gonna hit this really small part of your heart and this small part of your lung. And I was like, okay, okay, so I did it. Again, another good thing that had happened is Chris Clark was my pathologist and Chris Clark was a friend of mine. She was a runner. And Chris Clark, if you remember, was the only American who went to the Olympics in Sydney. So it was at 96. And she qualified in the marathon because no one else could make the standard. And she didn't make the standard either, but they always take one person from each country. So she was the only American who went that year in the marathon. And she told me, she had looked at my pathology and she was like, you have to have the radiation that tumor was just too close to your chest wall. And so I listened to her because she's a pretty powerful person, you know. 
So you get your five weeks of radiation, then the last week is a boost. So this other time, the radiation is kind of crossing over your chest. And he'd shown me the diagram that, oh, it's just going to kind of go across your chest. The lining of your heart is all that's really going to be hit. It's not your actual heart. You know, people out there who've had radiation know that the machine itself makes this huge sound when you're laying in it. It's like boom, 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 boom as it moves and it shoots you from one side then it goes all the way over and shoots you from the other side. So on this last week of radiation, they do this boost because the scar in breast cancer is where cancer is most likely to reoccur. I'm all prepared for this last week. And so then the, the machine goes boom, 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 boom. And it stops directly above me. And the radiation is like shooting straight into my heart because it's hitting mm. that right straight on. And I'm like, I'm like, what the, you know, I, you know, I used a bad word and uh, I'm like, wait, 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 you know, like this wasn't supposed to happen. But of course, by that point, you're not going to move. So. So anyway, yeah, they shot me straight through the heart for that last <laughs> week. So that was always like, well, there goes my heart. And that was like the biggest thing because it was like of all of the three sports that I do the most, running took the biggest hit. It, it's just without a doubt it has to do with that radiation and maybe a little bit of the drugs from chemo. So your expectations just change. It was like a lot of stuff went out the door of what I was going to do, mm-hmm. you know, in terms of sports. And then it really takes 10 years after cancer to really feel like you're totally normal again. Mm-hmm. And so I feel totally normal now. Right. So <laughs> on your website, you said something about being thankful for the experience, though. Yeah. Yeah. I am thankful for the experience. You know, I was in a marriage that wasn't very happy. And when you get to that point and then you go through cancer, like, oh, I'm not going to stand this anymore, you know? And it was like a year after I was done with treatment, we split up because it just was like, I can't waste any more time, you know? And that was like maybe the biggest part of it for me was I'm, I've always been a risk taker anyway. And I got into marriage, which I never really wanted to be married anyway. And I never wanted to have kids, although I love my kids. So I'm glad I have my girls now. But I kind of in marriage for me was very deadening. And so at that point, when I got cancer, it was like, whew, I got to get out of this and go on with my life, you know. So that was the biggest lesson from cancer. You just appreciate things more. You you know that it's going to come to an end someday. So you might as well grab experience and and have fun and having fun and like actually not being as caught up in your results. So sure, I can have goals, but if I don't perform as well as I think I should, I'm not going to cry about it. You know, I'm going to move on because there's going to be another race, hopefully. Right. Or maybe there's not, you know, Mm -hmm. so just enjoy where you're at at the moment. Has that attitude stayed with you? I mean, do you still feel that as, you know, strongly? Uh, Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. For sure. Yeah. Thanks for joining the new Fast Track episodes. Thank you to Lisa, even though it's been quite a while since she and I recorded. I think of her all the time because of what she said about AA and our full conversation of episode 56. It's very, very, very much worth a listen. I'd love to hear what you think about this episode. Call the new Hear Her Sports hotline at 725-BE-BADASS. Subscribe to the podcast wherever you listen to podcasts to get all the new Fast Tracks right when they come out. And tell your friends. Our design is by Agnes Studio and music by the band Goldbinds. Till next time, bye-bye. Whether you are a brand new runner or you've been running for years, there is always a new way that running can change your life. And this is what the Planted Runner is all about. Being planted also means you're ready for growth. You can start exactly where you are right now and get better. I'm coach Claire Bartholik, and I've coached hundreds of runners of all ages and abilities with science-backed training, nutrition, and mental strength techniques. And on the Planted Runner podcast, I'll share it all with you. You can be a better runner at any age. I'll show you how.